for this exam, as I think I've said to you many times, the individual questions, most of them aren't going to be any harder than some of the ones you've done. What makes this hard is that you have to look back at everything. But don't don't let yourself get, you know, thinking, oh, it's so hard, there's no way I'm going to do well, and then just talk yourself out of doing well. All right? Just approach it, you know, work, take some time to work on each, you know, each unit that we've done, and uh, and you'll be fine. The, the first part, 12 multiple choice questions, calculator not permitted. So everybody's got the entire exam, but, but you want to focus on this part first. They tell you that the most time you have is 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, they have you hand in the Scantron, the answer sheet for this. Then everybody can get out their calculator. They're saying suggested time, 30 minutes. So you're probably going to be done before the 40 minutes. Don't sit there and wait. Start working on the rest of it without your calculator. A lot of the rest of the exam you can do without your calculator. Okay, it isn't that it isn't that you need a calculator for the rest of it. As I said, this this one that I'm showing you has hints down here. But realize that there's more than one way to do questions. Don't don't think oh I, I don't remember how to do that. Just try different things. They purposely give you all you know that space so that you can work on it. Don't try to do it just in your head, right? If you know if you know something about point slope form, if you remember that that's point slope form, great, you can answer it probably more quickly, but that doesn't mean you there's no other way to do it. You could try changing it to slope intercept form. You could you could try a lot of different things. There's lots of different ways you could do this, right? It says the, that line passes through which point. If you know how to graph this directly, you can graph it okay, graph as it is now, right? Point slope form. Or what else could you do? Change it to some other form, right? Change to slope intercept. Or failing all else, if you are looking at these points, you could always just test the points in there, right? If it passes through, if the line passes through a point, the coordinates should work if you put them in for x and y. You know that, right? So you could just test them and say, this point is negative 5, 7. You could say, does negative 5, 7 work in that equation if I put it in for x and y? If I put 7 minus 2 and a half, negative 5 minus 5, and you work out that and see if it works on each side, that one doesn't work, okay, if you work it out. But you could do that. There's a lot of different ways to do these things, okay? Okay, or test each point. So don't look at these questions and think, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't remember point slope form, so i got to do a wild guess and say this, right? Some people tell you in social studies and other courses, if you are totally guessing, C is your best guess. That's not true for, for math, right? When you, when you come up with a math exam, you make the question and then you make the answers that fit. It isn't that people don't say, oh, I'm going to put something for C that, you know, anybody doing this, they don't say, um, well, I'm going to put, 50, you know, it's, it's probably this one because of whatever reason. They put them in some kind of logical order. The answers are set up in a logical order, so don't think, oh, it's always going to be C or anything like that. Usually it's in order from lowest to highest. So they've obviously put these answers in order of decreased by 15, decreased by 5, increased by 15. Well, for some reason they put increased by 11 after increased by 15. I don't know why they did that. But um, don't try to don't try to think, well, I think they, you know, I've had three B's in a row, so it's probably not B or, or any of that stuff, right? Probably they're not going to make them all be in the whole test. I think they balance it out more or less, but if if you've got three Bs and then you think the next one's B, your best guess is to, to make the next one B. Because you might have got one of these wrong, and then if you say, well, it can't be B again because I just guessed three Bs, you might end up making it worse, right? What's the matter? What? What? I know you hate it. It makes you feel uncomfortable, but all it takes is you might have got one of these wrong. Probably they're not going to do this to you. They wouldn't do this. They they might do that. I mean, so don't get too uncomfortable about it. And if you change one because you think, oh, it's too many Bs already, 
probably this isn't the one that's wrong. One of these ones are the one that's wrong. So your best guess is your best bet is to just pick the right answer, right? You can look at questions a couple different ways. Uh, if all else fails, if all else fails, if you can't if you can't find some way of figuring this out, right? Because this like I think a lot of you look at it and you say, you don't even look at the answers and you don't even look at all the information that you're given. You'd say, uh, calculate. I can't remember how to do that. And you try to think, when did we learn that? How, how can we do that? It's good to think about what unit does that test. But it's also good to look at what are the answers because in math you should look at the answers. In social studies, maybe it's not a good idea to look at the answers because then you start to think that word is familiar, right? Or, or you, 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 you pick one based on you think you've heard it before. But in math, nobody says... Oh, yeah, 15 kilometers an hour. I remember that. That was the answer in whatever, right? You're not going to recognize the answers in a math question. If all else fails, try to narrow it down. If you can't do anything else, try to narrow it down. If it says calculate this, the change in speed of the bike from segment P to segment Q, the change in speed, that's a tough question because it's saying uh, what was the speed there? What was the speed there? How much did the speed change? Did the speed increase or decrease? What do you think when you look at that picture? Without even thinking about any numbers, you can tell whether the speed increased or decreased. When something is, if you have a distance time graph, the slope of the line is the speed. So without even getting any numbers there, which what the slope goes from something to, is this higher or lower? This is lower. It's not as steep, right? This is less slope. It's a lower slope. If you recognize that and you say it's going some speed and it's not going as fast here, which ones can we rule out then? If we can tell that the speed decreased because this is not as much of a slope, you can rule out the ones that say it increased, right? The, the speed didn't increase from there to there. It decreased, right? If you want to actually look at the numbers and decide between these two, if I had to make a guess here, knowing nothing about looking at the numbers or anything, you know what I would guess? I would guess this one. Because I'm telling you that if if all else fails, try and use some logic. And I'm guessing that if they put two of them being 15, now th this doesn't always work, right? But if you can decide that it's decreased because this is less of a slope, and two of them have 15, that would be my guess. Now, is that right? What's the slope of those two things? This is how much here? That is 40 kilometers in two hours. It goes from 40 kilometers in two hours. Or what's the speed there? 40 kilometers in two hours is yeah, 20 kilometers per hour. And then up here, what's the speed up here? You've got... How much is that? Three squares is looking like 15 kilometers in, how much time is that? Six squares. Three hours, right? 15 kilometers in three hours, what is that? 15 kilometers, three hours, what's that? Five kilometers an hour. You went from 20 to five, what's the change? Decreased by 15. It's that one, right? Now, again, as I said, look at the answers and don't just say, wait a sec, I'm going to pick A because, or I'm going to pick D. Like, if you're going to make a guess, at least make it kind of either an educated guess or a logical guess. An educated guess, if you can try and narrow down the things, if you can tell, look, it's going slower here than it was there. I know the speed decreased. Actually, physically on your paper, cross these two out if you know it's not those ones. This is meant to write on. I, I, you get tests back and there's no writing on them at all. You're going to do better if you write on it. Definitely write on it. Don't just try to do it all in your head and, uh, and try and make some guesses that way, right? Um, this, where Often it's going to be like this, where you have two of the answers that are one thing, increased, and two of them that are decreased. And sometimes you can you can cut it in half and only have two to pick from. Okay? Now, there's an example of one that's not, right? 
Solve the following system of equations. You learned a lot of different methods for solving. You can use any one you want, right? Probably one of them is going to be a lot easier, or two of them are going to be a lot easier here than one of them. What's a good method to use there, you think, since this is fresh in your mind, hopefully? Is graphing a good choice? If you really wanted to, you could. There's going to be some blank grid somewhere in the booklet that you can use. You, you pick the one you're good at. It doesn't matter. Or let's say you forget everything about this. What would be your other choice? What would be another choice you could do? Let's say you can't remember how to do elimination. You can't remember how to do substitution. You can't remember how to do graphing. Do you give up and just say, I think it's this one? No, you don't. You think, is there another way I can do that they didn't intend that I could try and do it? You have lots of time. What else could you do? Let's say you forgot all three of those methods. What, so if you're faced with doing that question, you forget all three of those methods, what could you try? What could you try? No, before eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Not eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, if this is the solution, what should be true about those numbers? Just plug it in, right? If you put the numbers in here and you say 4 times 3 plus 2 times 2, this is not the most efficient way of doing it. But it's a way of doing it. When it's multiple choice, you have the disadvantage that you get absolutely no part marks, right? That's a disadvantage. But the advantage is they're giving you the possible solutions. One of those is right. There's a lot of different ways to figure out how it is. They're intending you'll use one of the methods because it's quicker. But it doesn't say you have to use one of those methods. You could just test them and see which one it is, right? If you put that in there and you got 12 plus 4... Definitely not 8, right? You already know it's not that one. You don't even have to test it in the other one. I'm not saying that that's the best way, but that's a way to do it. Okay? Anyways, you could do any one of those things, any method you want, right? Um, here's something that uh, we didn't spend a whole lot of time uh, specifically looking at. They're going to ask you a question about how many solutions something has. How many solutions? This is kind of a silly thing to have in grade 10 when all you're looking at is straight lines because there's only three things that could happen. If you have two lines, they could either cross in one place or what are the only two other possibilities? They're kind of weird possibilities, but what are the other two possibilities with straight lines? They could go exactly parallel. How many solutions would they have then? No solutions, right? No, Nothing, right? If they're parallel, no solutions. If they cross somewhere, one solution. The only other possibility is, what's the only other possibility? What's that? Well, it has to do with this one. What would that be, an infinite number of solutions? What if one line was right on top of the other? What if they were the same line? What if it turns out that those were two different equations for the same line? How many times would they intersect each other? It's a mystery. Well, it's not. It's it's yeah. There's no specific solution. It's an infinite number of solutions. Every point is a solution. What can you say about this right here? What's true about the slopes of those of those two lines? This. If they cross in one place, do they have the same slope? They have different slopes. If lines have different slopes, they're gonna cross somewhere. Even if all you can see is one goes this way and one goes this way, eventually they'll cross. If they have different slopes, if you look at this and you say, hey, I know that's that slope-intercept form, these don't have different slopes. These have the same slope. So it can't be this. It can't be that there's one solution. If they have the same slope, it either has to be that they never cross or they're the same line. How can you tell from the other piece of information which one of those it is? These have the same slope. Again, same slope, so they can't just intersect in one place. What about this number? What is that second number? It's the y-intercept, right? That's the y-intercept. The fact that they have different y-intercepts means they can't be the same line. So it's not this. This has no solution because they are parallel lines. Okay? Does that make sense to you? It... I, I know a lot of you would want to figure would would want to pick that because it looks really tempting to pick that, but just think about it, okay?